Hello students, since you all gave so much support to the previous videos that the part 7 and the part 6 which we posted regarding the previous year questions, we are back with another video with part 8 in which we will be discussing the next 8 questions which were asked in CUT 2022 just to make you all aware about the pattern, process and flow chart in which the questions are being asked in the CUT exam to make you aware about the uh, the questions so that you are not confused and you can do your preparations in an efficient manner. So we at AgriVision for you are here with the previous year question series. This is part eight. Part till part one to seven we have already posted. If you have not watched those videos, I request you all to watch those videos. I'm Divyanshu Gupta, your mentor for CUET, Food Science and Technology. Coming straight away to the first question which we have in today's video is Given below are two statements, that is statement one and statement two. So this video uh, covers all your statement based questions because in previous videos we found out that the questions were much more direct and uh, there were some some questions were related to match the following. But this is one of the new formats in which the questions are being asked and in this you cannot be uh, able to you will not be able to do questions by just guesswork because you need to be very clear with the idea whether that question is right or wrong. Then prolong. Higher degree of thermal exposure will lead to green discoloration of hard cooked eggs. Yes, this is true. Then green colored yolk can be avoided by using proper cooking time and temperature. Yes, this is also true. So both statement one and two are correct. So this is the most optimum answer for this question. Coming to the next question which we have. Again, we have a statement based question that is according to FSSI. The upper limit for the total polar compounds in a vegetable oil should be 25%. Yes. Then it is voluntary for food businesses to ensure the level of polar compounds is below 25% vegetable oil. No. So this makes second as the right answer for this question. That means both. No, no, no. Wait, wait. It means the third is the right answer for this question. That means statement one is true and statement two is false. So this is the third is the right answer for this question. This question was asked in CVT 2022. Coming to the next question, which we have is datum is a type of emulsifier. It is being very commonly used in your bakery industries. It finds its application in the baking uh, bakery to make improved bread volume. Yes, both statements are correct. So first is the right answer for this question. This was also asked in CVT 2022. If you are facing any difficulty in attempting any of the questions, you are not able to get a uh, correct explanation of that question and you want a deeper insight on any of the particular question, then you may comment your doubt. We will be very much happy to uh, clear your all doubts. And if you want a deeper insight in any of the particular topic and you want to join our course, then you may contact on the number given on the screen. There will be the helpline number will be very happy to clear all your doubts regarding the package and all. So you can very well uh, join our course to have a, a deeper insight on almost all of the topics and you can join our batch. Then specify the current order of the events during surimi processing. So surimi we all know is a fish based product and it is very popular and is commercially available also. So uh, I guess fish heading and gutting is the uh, first step whenever we are processing fish. Then uh, mincing will be the second step because you will be having a fish muscle. Then you have to mince it properly in order to have a part, uh, in order to have a, a clear emulsion of your uh, fish proteins. Then we'll be going for leaching and straining in order to uh, this is the next step which is done in your surimi processing. Then we have mixing with cryoprotectants and then forming in a particular shape and then we have your packaging. So the correct option comes out to be C, then A, then B, then your E and D. So C, A, B, E, D comes out to be your third option. So third option is the right answer for this question. So this is also one of the formats in which questions are being asked. So processing uh, in, in your processing flow chart type questions are very commonly being asked in uh, next year also like in 2024 also it can be asked because they don't change the format, but they will obviously change the questions which they are asking in your exam. Then choose the correct order of events during tomato ketchup processing. So tomato ketchup is one of the tomato based products. So first of all, in any of a tomato based project, uh, tomato based product, first step will be tomato juice pulp or straining. That means we'll be extracting out the tomato juice from the tomatoes and then we'll be going on for straining. Why we are going for straining to remove the uh, peel and your seeds. Then uh, next step will be concentration and adding of spices and your sugars. Then we'll be going for checking for TSS either using your hand factometer or by any other means. Then we'll be going for filling into hot bottles at 
82 at 88 degrees Celsius, then we'll be going for cooling and storage. So if we uh, uh, see the sequence of the options, it is D, E, C, then B and then A. So this is the correct sequence for this question. Let's see which option is the right for this question. So D, E, C, B, A is the third option, which is the most optimum answer for this question. So third option is the right answer for this question. This was also asked in CVT 2022. Then coming to the next question, and I can see this question is uh, very similar to the one which we asked in our test series. So uh, every week we are posting test series in which we are uh, uh, making conceptual based questions and uh, according to the format in which earlier questions are being asked. So from every topic, we are having sectional test, full length test to give a better insight of the process uh, in which the questions are being asked and to make you familiarize with the uh, uh, environment in which the questions like uh, the environment in which you are attempting the tests. So uh, you can always have the test series with you and that will be helping you to build your confidence for your exam. So which of the following methods are recommended for the determination of moisture content? So uh, we can see Dean and Stark method is one of the method. Then oven drying is not used. Why oven drying is not used? I explained this in class also because spices are having essential oils and oleo resins in them and oven drying uses some higher temperatures and that will be causing the loss of volatile compounds from them. Then Carl Fisher method is used. Infrared heating is also not used because of the higher temperature and dew point determination method is not useful in this. So A and C is the right option for this question, which makes two as that. That means B part as the most optimum answer for this question. So this question was in CVT 2020. So see, you can uh, very well see that the questions are more of application based and they are randomly asking questions from any other topic. They are not sticking to a particular topic. Then next question is statement based, but they are assertion and reason based. So this is also one of the formats in which questions are being asked in exam. So you should be clear with what is the assertion and whether that assertion is being explained properly in the next point or not. So food preservation by irradiation is termed as cold sterilization. Yes, we also discussed this question in your last video. Then uh, this similar question was there in last video related to irradiation. Then it is because microbial destruction can be achieved without the heating of food. So so oh, it is also known as cold selection because in your irradiation, the temperature is not increased that much. Only 0 0.5 to 0 0.6 degrees Celsius increase in found as per research papers during irradiation process when it is being done in food preservation. So both are correct and your reason is very well explaining the assertion. So both A and uh, assertion and reason are true and R is the correct explanation of A. Then coming to our next question, which we have is during constant rate period of drying, the surface temperature of food remains close to the wet bulb temperature. Yes, true. Then this is because the water moves from the interior of the food at the same rate at which it evaporates from the surface. So I guess when we were discussing about drying and dehydration of foods at that point, I explained to you with the help of a diagram also that during your drying period, your initially the water will be evaporated from the surface. Then the water from the center will move out, start to move out. Then at that point, the temperature of the food will not increase that much and even the rate will remain constant. Why? Because the temperature from inner cells of the food is being oozed out and that will uh, not change the rate and the temperature of the food that much. So it is also correct. Both statements are correct and they are the correct explanation. So both assertion and reason are correct and reason is the correct explanation of A. So this question was also in your CUT 2024. This was all for your part eight of this video in which we discussed eight questions from CUT 2022. And I guess this gave you a better insight in which how questions are being asked in your CVT exam. Stay connected for part nine. And if you want a deeper insight and you want a better explanation of any of the questions, you may comment down your queries. We'll be very happy to uh, clear your doubts. And if you want to have any clarification regarding the join in joining our batch, then you may contact on the number given on the screen and that uh, will be helping you out. So this was all for your part eight of the video. Stay connected for part nine. We'll be soon posting that and all the best for your exams. I I wish you all are preparing very good for your exam and I wish that you all land in your dream college or university which you are planning for. Thank you all.